Welcome back! This is Lone Moon's rare enemy battle. As you can see, I got pretty unlucky on the location for this one, just like the last battle. This map splits the team, it spreads out a lot of the enemies, and it puts the monster really far away from the starting area. It's also unfortunate that the monster is the King of Wings. He can traverse the terrain easily, and he already has several enemies in range, including an archer who might kill him. I did have one stroke of luck. The rusted bow this bird is carrying is Parthia. I'll have to work fast to get it before the red team can steal the kill, but if I succeed, I'll have my second legendary weapon. It's too bad they cost so much mithril to forge. The training schedule is more of the same from last map, really. Byleth is staying in the Enlightened One class, which he should be able to finish. The other top priority is Sedeth, who's now a soldier. He likes defense plus two, but mainly, I'm a slut for reposition. Ignatz will be on trade secret duty this time, because Petra would be too busy intercepting the monster. And Marianne's still a dancer. That's really the one thing that's been most obnoxious about the locations for these two ox battles. I would have liked to put her in Paladin to improve her riding skills some more, but I needed her dancing to get through the desert quickly. And I'll need it again here because the enemy distribution is so thin. One other project is Leonie. She has all the combat skills she needs, but I want her to keep improving her authority rank so that she can become my dedicated retribution user. The Index Swordfighters provide fantastic stat boosts, including a massive hit bonus that will make her more effective as a bow knight. Ferdinand's back on the team mainly because he's underleveled. As a result, he stands to gain a decent number of experience points on this map. He's also fairly close to unlocking Swift Strikes. I still don't plan to field him much, but that'll be good to have when I do. I already mentioned Petra, but Cyril and Flame will join her as flyers. They'll all work together to shoot down the King of Wings. Petra's using the secret transport force for flying stride, which will help the other two cross the map very quickly. Last on the active roster is Balthus. Since my three flyers will be otherwise occupied, someone else has to take over impregnable wall duty. That's what he's here for. I'm picking my adjutants by process of elimination, essentially. Tilda has no need for skill training. Claude does, insofar as I want him to get Bowfare eventually, but he needs nothing in the near term, and he will see plenty of combat. So I'm trying to improve reason levels on Lysithia and Lawrence. S rank in that skill has much bigger impact than the equivalent in all other weapon types. Sedeth and company will start by attacking what's right in front of them. Marianne got to use the Knowledge Gem for her first move, but now Sedeth takes it off her hands. Balthus keeps everyone safe with Impregnable Wall. Petra flies west to boost Cyril, Flane, and Ignatz. Her march ring will make it a little easier for her to keep up afterward. Let us away. Using rescue from the other side of this brigand maximizes the distance that Cyril can cover. And Flame can fight the Dark Mage on enemy phase. Ready anytime. Ignat steals the first trade secret. The other one is on the brigand right up the hill. It's not the ideal setup for skill grinding, but I'm still trying to make Byleth master his class in a hurry. Here he'll take at least three attacks on enemy phase, but I forgot something important. Stay focused. After moving, he needs to equip his own knowledge gem. Let's get to it. Cyril goes last, and it's his job to distract the giant bird by using a gambit. I had Byleth wield a steel sword specifically to stop him from doubling.
Sadat needs to be involved in more than one battle each enemy phase, and therefore it's time to retreat. I am Ferdinand von Eyre. Marianne moves over to re-establish the wall formation. What's different now is that the ends are open to two enemies at a time. Appreciate it. Let me at him. I'm sorry. Apologies, guide me well. I will get the victory. Ready anytime. I'm sandbagging Leonie hard to make her deal as little damage as possible. Cyril breaks the last barrier. That'll buy me one more turn for the rest of my flyers to catch up and take down this monster. Set is the only one holding a broken weapon, and that makes him an attractive target. Byleth no longer needs the fetters. Through Leone, he can pass into Ignatz while still reaching a position that two enemies can attack. We must all do our part. A second use of Cyril's lure gambit can pull the giant bird closer to Petra so that she won't have to end her turn in range of the assassin. After securing my prize, Flynn goes south to protect Byla. I'm watching Lord. Apologies. I have faith. 
Conveniently, the guy with the last trade secret is right next to Ignaz. Cyril and Petra have more or less free reign to do whatever they want now. I could force all the enemies up here to walk down towards Sedith, but that would take a while. And I've got things set up so that Sedith can complete all his goals without that much help. That makes this a decent opportunity to improve Cyril's axe rank some more. He's only shooting for B+. Cyril already has the lance rank required for Wyvern Lord, and he's nearly at A in flying. There's no real need to complete all three skill requirements to pass the exam, and I don't care that much about Cyril's A-rank axe arc, Armored Strike. In the future, he'll start to use mainly bows. Violet will kill that brigand on enemy phase, and after that, I want him to come east. With her 6 tile rescue range, Flame can make that happen. But she can do more. She can also pull that cavalier down to the south. Violet can earn class mastery points just by striding, and that will help Leone and Ignaz climb the mountain instantly. So nice of you. Appreciate that. It was an inconvenience that the monster in this battle was a flyer, who could and would go commit suicide if I didn't stop it, but I actually appreciate that. I said long ago that I liked the trade secrets added by the DLC. They give you an extra objective to focus on during quests, breaking up the monotony a little. And so it is with the monsters that appear in these rare enemy battles. Ultimately, the dynamism they provide is important, even if that messes up my training a little.
now is the time to bring Byleth over. There are two reasons to have Marianne heal Sedeth right now instead of dancing. One is that this is the last turn when I'll have Impregnable Wall up, and Sedeth will need the extra HP in future turns. The other is that she's really, really close to B rank and authority. If she heals or attacks one more time, Marianne will be able to bring a beefier battalion to the next three battles. Reposition acquired. So our most important objective is done, and I just need Byleth to finish. You may have noticed that Sedeth was using axes on the last map, and he's wielding lances now. That is entirely because of his current class. He gets a small bonus to lance experience as a soldier, whereas before he was getting plus two on axes as a brigand. Sedeth has a lot of different skills to juggle. He wants A lances for swift strikes, A axes and B brawling for war master, D plus bows to unlock Archer, and C plus or B flying so that he can pass the Wyvern Lord exam. That was amazing. I am Ferdinand von Eyer. Stay focused. It'll take just one more round of combat for Byleth to finish. Guide me well. The main thing that Balthus is getting out of this battle is authority. He and Raphael are sitting at C plus still. They won't be able to upgrade their battalions before the time skip, but they should both reach B rank shortly after. One reason, among many, that Dark Flyer is such a boon for Flane is that it makes her link bonus with her father much more usable. Without the DLC, she's mostly locked in infantry classes, and so there's a huge movement disparity between them. You can stick her in Pegasus Knight and just staple her to Sedeth as an adjutant, but now they can easily work together when they're both on the field. With the authority from Marianne, I anticipate that I'll assign Mockingbird's Thieves to her most of the time. That battalion grants a nice plus 10 to avoid and hit, as well as 5 points of magical attack, 
and those things should make her more effective with magical swords. It also offers 10 crit, which I don't really care about, 5 physical attack that should make it feasible to use cheaper non-magical swords sometimes, and 3 points in both defenses. I rewinded because I realized it was safer for Seth to use a gambit instead of his broken lance. Petra can help Sneerol reach the northwest corner of the map. This is an error, though. I intend to move Leone, and if I do that, the boss can kill Petra. Potion is needed. Ready anytime. Leone's now level 26, and she's one of the characters who gets three free levels at the time skip. By the time I'm done with chapter 13, she should be qualified for Bona. Ready when you are. Now it's all down to the squad in the southeast. I am Ferdinand von Eyre. Stay focused. Just in time, there's sacred power. For a run like this, where I'm trying to route basically every map and I'm training a lot of people, I value that skill a lot. Let us away. Have I earned no reprieve? Since Byleth and Sedith have both reached their goals, I'll refresh Ferdinand and feed him the final kill, which he would have already gotten if he hadn't missed. 
Back to the fridge. Oh, and we're also about to find out if we've won the moose meat sweepstakes. I will. Hell yeah! Now I'm all set for endgame, and if I get any more later, that'll just be gravy. We're also ready for our last two battles before the time skip. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to it. <laughs>